Welcome to the 12 steps to become an urban or vertical farmer. This series brings you the stories of many different urban and vertical farmers from around the world and the 12 steps they had to take to become successful. To end their story, every farmer gave their final advice to aspiring urban and vertical farmers. This was so awesome that we compiled all these answers into one video, this video. So sit back, enjoy, and let the 12-step farmers give you their advice to help you start your urban and vertical farming adventure. First of all, you need to be com convinced about why you want to do it. That's the most important thing. If, if you're not even convinced about why, forget about it. You need for yourself to define how you're going to do it. Ma write the business plan. It's not about... It's not about having a business plan, it's about having a plan. If you don't have a plan, you're screwed. Because you're going to run around, spend your money, and then you need a plan. Have a strategy. A strategy can be very easy, but you need to have the plan. Okay, how are we going to get to a point where this is a business? Because, I mean, farming, you can do farming as a hobby, which is fine. But then you need another job to sustain the hobby. If you want it, your farming to become your livelihood, you need to have a plan. And then you just need to go for it because you like doing it. And you know why you want to be doing it. Then you just need to go 100%. I think what I would say is that you need to see this experience as a, a bit of a, a experience of life a little bit. You need to see it like that, that it will teach you so many things about yourself and um, that it brings you a lot of things uh, to learn, that it will be tough. <laughs> but if you see tough as a good way of growing, then then it's interesting, I think. Mm. And um, yeah, that's what, I would, that's what I would say. And that you feel that, I don't know, you're in something that's that's growing a little bit. It's cool to feel that you're not alone doing the mushrooms, and I like to hear that there are other projects and stuff because, uh, yeah, I think it's a it's a cool cool thing to do. You're part of something. Yeah, we are part of. Um, I mean, I know this is the future. Not only urban farming, but uh, farming in organic farming. I would say, you know, mm -hmm. doing some. Yeah. Just just go for it. There's something I want to add. When we arrived in France, you know, French people, I, I did my thesis about uh, French people versus American people and how they behave in different situations. And the French people way of doing things is they don't like risks. Okay, so they spend a huge amount of time and sometimes money to evaluate the risk before doing anything. You know, they're like, oh, uh, maybe I shouldn't do this because of that. Let's calculate it. And when in the end they do something, 10 people have done it before them. And, uh, and, you know, in the American and Argentinian way of doing it, it's like, just go for it. You do it, and then you think of what you shouldn't have done, and then you change those things. But you're already a step ahead, like 10 steps ahead from the French guy. So when we arrived here, we were like, should we do it the French way or the Argentine way? And obviously we did the Argentine way. <laughs> and, and it was great because it was not supposed to work. Everything that we'd done, if you follow the books, it was not supposed to work. And we just did it how we felt it would be good good and, and it worked so just follow your instincts and just do it if somebody who wants to start CSA uh, farm they have to check and make sure they have to do some kind of research uh, market research in the village or in the area where they are if they have land already um, and but then if they have enough if they are able to have enough members and you can get your members long before you you start your CSA farm you can st you can first start building a list of uh, of your members and make sure that you have enough members and then starting the farm is in fact peanuts you, you there's a lot of examples uh, of other CSA farmers in, uh, in Flanders who have done it you can go and ask for help uh, we, the CSA network provides help so it's just a, the, uh, just a question of getting a group of people that are willing to come and buy uh, food from you and do this uh, year after year and then uh, the next steps are easy in fact I would say mm. if you have a little bit green fingers uh. il faut faire ce qu'on a envie de faire et en étant enfin il faut prendre du plaisir à faire ce qu'on fait c'est ça c'est la philosophie plus importante je pense ouais, ouais.
Tu es d'accord Je suis d'accord. To become a farmer in general, yeah, try to be autonomous. Try not to be uh, bonded to uh, big uh, yeah, loans or, or financiers or, or people that buy your stuff. Uh, try to yeah, be as autonomous as possible. And that for me means that you operate um, in a local environment. Um, autonomous but also like um, connected with the uh, with the community with the local community try to do it local keep it small yeah these kind of keywords and try to get a fair price what would you teach every uh, new urban or vertical farmer or someone who wants to get into it uh, I think the most important thing is to plan ahead. I think uh, it's very important for you to know who you're selling your products to. I think it's very easy for us to get caught up in all the technicalities like uh, the hardware I'm going to choose, the LEDs, the, the areas, but is it profitable? I mean, have you really did your number? Did you do your numbers? Did you find partners to sell your products to? I mean, what are they going to buy from you? Is it lettuce? Is it microgreens? Is it mixed salads? Uh, I think the first thing is to know who's going to buy your products, what you're interested in, what are the volumes, and that will dictate the technology, the area, and everything else that you're going to, to build. It's going to grow on that basis. So I think that's very important. Obviously, uh, you don't have to, to marry the first person you, you meet, obviously. I mean, you're not, you're not get, like, getting a um, uh, distributor for life or anything like that. Uh, but you should definitely know what you're selling. Obviously, you, you don't need to get a distributor. You could sell your own stuff. You could, you could also have your own shop integrated into your warehouse or whatever. But I think it's very important to know your markets. And I, I think a lot of people failing in that regard. They start planning their, their, the, the size of the warehouse, the, the brand of LEDs, the, the controller, the sensors, and they still have no idea what they're going to grow, who's going to buy the products. I would say that um if you're going to get into this, really think about what it is that you're actually trying to do and understand that if, if you, you know, that the implication that you're just going to help people somehow isn't necessarily going to happen if, you know, your financing thesis and values are not in line with that social welfare piece. You know, every piece of the puzzle needs to be aligned on that value set. Um, a lot of people talk about the value of this, but in the end, um, it's driven by, you know, you know, personal benefit um, and not necessarily about a whole or uh, a more holistic approach to, you know, local economic development or, you know, living economies, local living economies or whatever you want to say. If, if, if you're trying to build, you know, a vertical farming empire, then say that. Don't sugarcoat it. Um, so, you know, for those who are interested in getting into this, I would say, I would just caution them in that it's a slippery slope if you're not careful and realistic or at least knowledgeable about what this you know tech boom means for society and what it means for for disadvantaged populations if you're not in tune with the effects of raising huge amounts of capital and blowing that um, but you still think that you're doing something good you need a reality check so um, just be aware of that. Thank you for watching. We hope you really enjoyed this video. And by now, you should understand that running an urban or vertical farm requires an understanding of its many different aspects. So if you want to learn more in depth from every farmer and prepare well on how to start your adventure, subscribe now to the 12 steps to become an urban or vertical farmer on kickforce.video. See you there and remember, keep on growing.